Hello everyone, this is Professor Robert Solis. Welcome to this video lesson. What I want to do is to create a calculator as you can see right here. Well, actually not right here, right here. Um, we're going to create a calculator that solves for the surface area and for the volume for a cylinder. And as you can see from the software requirements, you're going to create two functions. One that says calculate surface area and the other one that says calculate volume. Both of these functions require parameters or arguments, uh, namely the height and the radius of the cylinder. And so there's this really cool website. Um, it's called Calculator Soup. And it has all kinds of formulas for different shapes. And so here's the shape that we're primarily going to be dealing with, the circular cylinder. And it has the formula for volume. And then if I add the top, the bottom surface area, and then this round part right here, which we call the lateral surface area, I add all those together, this is what the formula looks like here. So we're going to use that, use those two formulas in our program. So back over here at um, Visual Studio, I'm going to create uh, a text box and a label so the user can enter the radius and enter the height. And then when we click the calculate button, it's going to determine those. And then we'll put those answers in these two labels um, for the surface area and for the volume. But I'm thinking now, I want to put everything into a, a group box. So over here in containers, I'm going to drag and drop group box. And let me open that up a little bit. So I'll take these items right here. And I'm going to move them inside the group box. And let me just kind of you know, position them over here like this, say, for example. And then I can resize the group box. And the nice thing about placing them in the group box is you can see I can move these items around. That probably shouldn't say group box one. So let me go down over here to the text property where it says group box one. And we'll say um, cylinder properties. Right, that's a pretty good um, nomenclature for what it is that I'm requiring from the user. I need the properties. I need the radius. I need the height. And then um, I'll close this up a little bit. Let me get that button out of the way. And then I'll put this guy over here in the upper left-hand corner. I like that. That looks good. Let me do the same thing over here. Put those into a group box. So I'll just simply drag and drop group box over here. And... I'll take these guys and move them inside the group box. Now let me refine that location to something like this, say for example. And um, I want this group box to be the same size as this one over here. So I think what I'll do is I'll just move this underneath it. And there's that blue line on the left-hand side. So I know that the left-hand side is aligned. And then I'll move this over. Oh, it looks like I can't quite get there because this thing is a little bit too big. So I know what I'll do. I'll just take uh, cylinder properties, make that a little bit bigger. <laughs> So I'll do this, you know, something like that. And then that'll allow me to take this guy and make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's fine. I want this height to be the same. So let's see here. It looks like I'm matched up right there. And I'll just take this guy over here. I'm matched up over here. Good. So those are the same size. Um, this says group box two, but it should say something else. Like, um, you know, um, maybe results. Say, for example, these are the results of uh, these properties that you get the surface area is this, the volume is this, something like that. I'll take this calculator or calculate button and uh, I'll just span across here like this. Something like that. Um, wouldn't that be great if I could get this picture right here? Uh, circular cylinder, this entire picture, and put that into my to my program because then the user would know, oh, I see what you mean by radius. I see what you mean by height. Okay, so I'm in the Windows operating system and there's a snipping tool that I can use. Um, so actually, I'm not using the Edge web browser. So let me go over here and scroll down or scroll up a little bit. Okay, so that's the image that I want. Now, if I look over here, let's see. I think I, I think I can type in snip. Ah, that's that's it right there. Snipping tool. It basically just grabs part of the, of the screen. So I'll use this snipping tool, and uh, let's say that I want a rectangular snip. Yep, that's right. So now I'll snip from here, 
all the way to here. You don't have to do this part. I'm showing you how to do it in case you want to include a picture box. Um, there it is. That's beautiful. And so what I'll do is I'll say save as, and I'll just save this to the desktop since it's easy for me to save everything to the desktop. And uh, this is a um, cylinder. And I'll save it as JPG. That's fine. Click Save. All right, I don't need the stepping tool anymore. Let me go back over here to Visual Studio. Here we go. And uh, let's put that image somewhere over here, so for example. So what I can do is I can use an image box. Uh, let's see if I can find that. So over here, or picture box, I'm sorry. And I'll take that picture box and I'll drag and drop it over here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And I'll have to end up resizing this, but that's fine right now. All right, so here we are, and I need to place an image in here. So over here is the image property for this picture box. And you'll notice that there's a button over here with three dots. That's the ellipsis. If I click that, it's going to show me a dialog that says, hey, where's this image you're looking for? Well, remember, we put it on the desktop. So let me go to a local resource and import that image. So I'll say import. I know it's on the desktop. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, there it is. Cylinder. There's that PNG file. So let me click open. Yep, that's what I want right there. Let me click OK. All right, so now it places it into the picture box. Now, of course, if I change the picture box, you see what happens here. That's not good. We're, we're cutting off part of the image. So what you can do is you can go to the size mode and change how you want this image to be displayed in your picture box. So if I go over here and change that to stretch image, okay, that's it fills it in, but obviously it's distorted. I don't like that. What does auto size do? Okay, that's nice. It just simply resizes it based on the size of the image. Center image looks like that. And then zoom looks like this. Now, check this out for zoom. If I change the handles, do you see how it changes the proportions of that image? I like that. That, that looks good to me. So let me just simply try to fill in as much as I can. Uh, looks like right there is fine. I'm trying to center it. That looks pretty good. Close this form up a little bit. So now when the user sees, uh, in fact, let me just run the program really fast. When we run the program, the user will see this picture. And by default, we'll understand what this radius is supposed to be about, what the height is supposed to be about, and what it is that we're trying to solve for, the volume and the surface area for this circular cylinder. Okay. Instead of form one, we're going to want to change that to cylinder calculator. That looks pretty good. Um, I don't have to have the minimize and the maximize button, so I'm going to take those off. If you want to leave them on there, that's fine too. Let me save all because I don't want to lose any work that I've already been working on. And let's go ahead and give names to the various items. So over here, we'll just simply say TXT radius. We'll say TXT height. Um, over here, that's a label. So we'll say LBL surface area. And this is the volume. So LBL volume. This is a button, obviously. BTN calculate. And that's it. I don't have to give a name to this picture box, nor do I have to give a name to the group boxes. Everything that I've given a name to is going to be reactive programmatically, so I think we're set. Let me go ahead and click Save All. I'm going to minimize the toolbox, minimize the properties. And so now we're ready to obtain the data from the user and click uh, and then determine what the surface area and the volume is. So let me double click on calculate. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to press enter a couple of times. Remember what the requirements are. You must create two functions. One is called calculate surface area. Okay. So I'll create a function. It's called calculate surface area. Parens. All right. Now it's going to require two parameters to calculate the surface area. If I go back over here, it looks like the surface area is going to need the height and the radius. In fact, you can see the volume also requires the height and the radius. 
So what I need to do is I need to get a copy of those. And so we call that bival. Bival means the thing that you're giving to me, I know that you have the original, you're giving me a copy. Now if I said by ref, that would mean you just gave me the original. Okay. So now that I have the original, if I modify it, the original is gone. We don't want to do that in this case. Not that it's bad. Um, we're just simply going to give, just give me a copy of the radius, a copy of the height, and that's fine. I can take over from here. Here, I'll call it height parameter as double. So you're expected to give me a number with a decimal point. And in my code, in my function, I'm going to call it height parameter. Comma. I also need something else to do my job. I need the radius parameter. And we'll say as double. Okay. Now, the last thing that I'll do outside the parentheses is I'll say as double because what I need to do is you give me this, you give me this, I will calculate the surface area and I will return it to you. That's what this part out here, at, see the parentheses over here? In fact, let me just reduce the zoom temporarily and I'll bring it back to 200. Actually, that's way too small. Okay, so do you see how this is one line of code? I just happen to have it word wrapped because it was... Um, uh, you know, the zoomed in too much. Here are the two parameters. When I finish with my solution, I will give you a double. That's what this part right here means. I am about to return to you a double. Okay. So now my job is to calculate the surface area. Okay, so let me take kind of like a longer approach, and then I can show you maybe a more direct approach. So let's see here. I need to solve, so we'll say dim uh, surface area as double. That's what I'm trying to solve for. Okay, so we'll say surface area is going to be assigned what? Well, over here, according to this formula, it looks like it's 2 pi r parentheses times h plus r. So 2 pi r, let's take care of that part first. So 2 times pi times r. Well, r, we're not calling it r, we're calling it radius parameter. Times, okay, let me put open and close parentheses, because I need to put something in here. What do I need to put in here? It looks like it's h plus r. So it's the height parameter plus the radius parameter. So I've just taken this 2 pi r, so 2 pi r times the quantity, uh, the summation, height parameter plus radius parameter. And now that I've got that, I can return surface area. Now, this is a very readable function. You can see step by step what's happening. I'm declaring something, I'm solving for something, and then I'm going to give it back to you. That's what functions do. A function is a chunk of code that I use it to do something. In this case, solve for the surface area. Once I've done that, then I send it back to you. So it's kind of like a boomerang, right? So I throw that boomerang. I expect it to come back to me. All right. Now, do I have to do it this way? No, I could have consolidated everything. So this is like version one. I'll show you version two. So let me comment this out. Version two would have been just something like this. Return, and then this equation right here. So I'll just simply copy and paste this. Paste, paste. Okay, so I could have just returned this mathematical formula. Now, for me, I kind of like doing things like this because it's very readable. Um, and that's what I think is probably the most important thing for any engineer, software engineer, programmer to do is to make your programs readable, not only to yourself, but to others. Chances are, when you're out in the industry, you're going to modify someone else's code. This looks very readable. Nothing wrong with this. It's just a concise version of what was done over here. So that's one function that we had to create. It looks like another function that I have to create is the calculate volume. Okay, so let me go back over here, and I'll hit enter a couple times. Notice where my cursor is. My cursor is before end class, but it's outside of any other function or sub. All right, I need to create, oops, sorry, uh, calculate volume. So we'll say function calculate volume. Now, in order to calculate the volume, it looks like I'm going to need, uh, let's see here, it looks like I'm going to need radius and also the height. So let me go back over here. 
I'm just simply copy and paste this. It's really the same thing. Or I could have typed it out. That's fine. What do I need to do my job? Well, you need to give me the height. You need to give me the radius. And then I will return to you a double, which represents the volume of the cylinder. So when you, if you did what I did, which is copy and paste, make sure you hit enter because you need this thing over here that says end function. The reason why that's green is because we haven't returned anything. Once you return something, then that green squiggly underline will disappear. Okay, well, let's go ahead and um, create a variable called volume. And volume is going to be assigned the following formula. Let's see here. It is pi r squared h. Okay, so pi math.pi times r squared, which is radius squared. Oh, so that's uh, pow. Math.pow radius squared times h, I believe. Uh, yeah, times h. So that's the height parameter. So as you can see, I just simply go between the screens, making sure that I'm typing in the formula correctly. Once I'm done, then I can simply return the volume. And as I did over here for the surface area, I could just simply return this mathematical function, one line of code, that's okay too. All right, let me save all. It looks like I've got my two formulas or two functions. One will determine the volume, one will determine the surface area. Now I can use those to my advantage as tools to output over here the results of the surface area and the results of the volume. All right, now that I've got this, let me go back over here to my main program. And uh, I'll type in my comments. So we always start off with these lines of code. In terms of declarations, well, you ask yourself, what is it that the user must give to you? Well, definitely, I've got to get the radius and the height from the user. So we'll say dim radius as double. I don't want to make that an integer because the user could give me a real number, a number with the decimal point. Same thing with the height. I'll make that a double in case the user wants to include um, a decimal point. Well, now that I've got those, let's place them into, uh, well, I've got them from the text box, and I've got to place them into the variables. So over here, radius, we'll say convert dot to double. Get it from the text box radius, this guy right here, so I'll double click. Don't forget the dot, te, dot text. Double click. All right, so I've got the radius. And now let's go ahead and obtain height. So we'll say convert, dot to double, txt, um, let's see here, txt, height, there it is, dot text. Now that I've obtained the radius and the height, I can go ahead and perform my calculation. Uh, and also output. So what I could do, now remember what this function does, this function calls, or will determine what the surface area is, and also the other one over here will determine what the what the volume is. So really this calculation, uh, I can really calculate and output at the same time to the label. So I think what I'll do is I'll just say calculate and output at the same time. And what I'm going to do is this. I'll say uh, LBL surface area dot text is going to be, okay, now let me just stop right here. Now, I could call the function calculate surface area, but what is this thing returning to me? It's returning a double. I intend on putting a double into a text property, which is a string. So could I do that? Yes. Should I do that? I would say no, because I want to explicitly convert this double into a string and then put the string into the text. Visual Basic takes care of it for you automatically as we've seen in the past, but I'm going to be a purist and do this. Convert dot to string and then within the parentheses I'll say call the function calculate surface area, but remember surface area needs something. It looks like it needs the height parameter and it needs the radius parameter. So I put an open close parentheses and I'm going to give you the height comma and it looks like you also need the radius. So I'll give you the radius. Let me close that parentheses 
And I have to have another parentheses over here to match this guy, as you can see over here. So now what this guy does is it calls calculate surface area. You give it the height and the radius. It comes back and it returns a double. So this whole thing is going to be some number. Uh, I don't know, 24, 12.34, say, for example. It's going to return some number. That number is going to be converted into a string and placed into the text property for this particular label. Let's do the same thing for volume. So that means I'm going to have to convert to string. And then I have a function that will calculate the volume. So it's called calculate. Ah, uh, let me see here, sorry. Calculate volume. There it is. Let me put an open and close parentheses here and put my cursor right back in there. It looks like you need a height and you also need a radius. And both of those had better be doubles, as you can see here. All right, so I'll give you the height. I'll give you the radius. And let me go outside here and press enter. So I call the function calculate volume. I give you the height. I give you the radius. You are going to return to me some number, whatever that number happens to be, 34.6, say, for example. Then I convert that into a string, which is placed into the text property of this label. So let me save my work. All right, so if I have a radius of 2 and a height of 3, let me calculate. And so here's our answer. Now, I don't like the number of digits here uh, after the decimal point. Maybe I just want two, three, four digits, right? How can I control that? So what I can do is something slightly different than what I did over here. I'm going to comment these out and show you another approach. What I could have done is this. LBL surface area dot text is going to be, okay. Now, I can take a number and convert it into a string. Well, this calculate surface area requires the height and it also requires the radius. Dot, convert this to a string and give me three numbers after the decimal point. So it's a different way of using two strings. See, this was convert to string, but as you can see here, it gave me, I don't know, eight, nine digits after the decimal point. This is a different way. This is saying take some number. Like I could have done this. Watch this. Radius. Radius. Take some number, which in this case is this variable, convert it to a string, but specifically give it the following format. F means floating numbers. How many numbers after the decimal point? And in this case, I'm saying three. Well, instead of a variable, I have a function. Now remember, this function, see this, this drop down over here? Notice over here at the end it says double. That's what this thing does. In fact, I have it over here. This thing returns a double. So this is really a number. This function returns a number. I'm going to take that number, convert it to a string with the following format. You give me three numbers after the decimal point. Well, I can do the same thing over here for volume. We'll say calculate volume. You need the height. You need the radius. As you can see over here, give me the height, comma, then give me the radius. And then I want you to display that as three numbers after the decimal point. So again, just a different way of using toString than how we used it over here. Let me run the program and let's see what happens. So again, I'll enter that 2 and the 3, but notice now you only get three numbers after the decimal point. Um, maybe you want more than that. Maybe you want less than that. What do you think would happen if I put F0? How many numbers after the decimal point would I display? Zero. None. Exactly. Zero. So you determine that with this particular approach. Okay. Would you even get a decimal point? Yeah, let's that's, that's, that's experiment. That's a good question. Would you even get a decimal point? So I'm going to make this F0, and I'm going to run the program. We'll put a 2 over here. We'll put a 3 over here. Looks like you don't even get a decimal point, which makes sense because you don't have any numbers after the decimal point. Who knows you know, what the reason is for the customer for wanting this. The idea is that you can do it. You can change how many numbers you want after the decimal point. And that's it. So this is Professor Robert Solis. I hope this video lesson was helpful. Have a good day. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.